Hello, my name is Jasmine Betsy. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you guys about my life as a registered nurse during the coronavirus pandemic. If you'd like to hear all about that and my experience, please stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. and we will talk about our new plan of action, a new plan of care, or what the CDC is saying today, or what the news is saying today. It's always something different. It was changing every single day. You hear me? How I do my job was changing every single day to the point where it was like, you know, I don't, I don't really believe you know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't think nobody know what they're doing. DC and the hospital administration was making up the rules as they went along. I mean, I don't blame them. What could they do? Nobody's seen anything like this in our lifetime. Um, the director let us know we were expecting some masks and gowns and they were seized by the government because they felt like it was needed more elsewhere. This is a disposable mask. This one time use disposable mask. Now they're telling me I need to keep this mask and wear it repetitively for my entire shift, which is usually about 13 hours. And we were all like, what? <laughs> Not only do I need to keep this for my entire shift, I need to be prepared and bring it back the next day to reuse it for another day. Again, this is disposable. This is one time use. This was not designed with that in mind. They were advising us to leave them out in the sun um, or to put them in the oven at 100 degrees to sanitize them. They started to recycle masks. At the end of my shift, put it in a bag, write my name, Jasmine, this is Jasmine's mask, and they sanitize it by using a black light or UV light. Use a UV light to sanitize it. Now it doesn't wash or clean, so if I got my makeup on it, it still be makeup on it when I get it back, but that's what they were doing to, um, keep us protected and within 95 men. The hospitals then create a policy that everyone within the hospital, every single person inside the hospital has to wear a mask the entirety time as they're in there. Unless they're in a break room eating, you need to have a mask on. Even when you're not in a patient's room, while you're in the hallway, while you are walking around, while you're on an elevator, you need to wear a surgical mask, not the N95, just a regular surgical mask. Everybody needs to stay covered, everybody. They also ended visitations. So if you are coming into the hospital as a patient, no one's gonna be there with you. If you unfortunately get ill and die, you're gonna die alone without your loved ones. Um, and that was hard. That was hard to hear um, the cries of family members, wives, husbands, children calling nonstop, worried about their grandma, their husband, their wife, their, their loved ones. And it was just heartbreaking. And it's like, it's only so much I could do. You know, by now, most people have a cell phone that has video calling and that's what they're doing. But imagine, you know, your parent, your child, um, your grandparents in the hospital fighting for their lives and you can't be there with them. There was, um, a husband, he, uh, stayed in the parking lot and he would just, that's all he could do, stay in the parking lot. He just wanted to be near his wife. And I was like, that, that's, that's love. That's love. If you needed to be in contact with this patient like me, I need to go into their room and provide care. All of these things needed to happen. And definitely gloves, a mask, some type of face covering, whether it be a shield or goggles, a head covering, a gown, and the shoe coverings were optional and I definitely used it, and gloves. So this was a very tedious process. Now there is a proper way to do this if you're not a healthcare professional. You can't just be like, oh, let me just put it on. No, there's an order. There is a way to do it and remove it without contaminating yourself and people around you. There are people who would watch as you go into this room. So if you're going in to see a COVID patient, 
you need to sign in. Someone's going to sign you in that you went into this room and it's going to be on record that Jasmine went into Mr. Johnson's room four times and someone has to watch me don on this PPE, which stands for personal protective equipment. Someone has to watch me put it on and watch me take it off to make sure I did it correctly. So in the midst of all of this, we begin to run out of gowns. Gowns were originally disposable, one-time use, just like the surgical mask, but we're out. So two things happen. We start to limit the number of times we go into patients' room. I worked between both acute care and ICU. In the ICUs, we brought the equipment outside of the room. I've never seen this happen before. We would put extension tubing on IV lines and drips and long enough so that I could bring this IV pole outside of the room. The same thing with ventilators. Uh, the ventilator monitor would be outside of the room. Uh, two feedings, we put extensions on it and that's outside the room. I've never seen that happen before. So all of this is outside the room because they beep. And if it beeps or if it stops or if you need to change a bag, you need to go in there and do it. But now we, we don't have enough supplies for me to keep going in there as much as I would normally have to. So we brought it outside the room and we started uh, using reusable gowns and we started this thing called zones so red zone green zone red zone yellow zone green zone red zone was the patient's room the yellow zone was the hallways and the green zone would be behind a nurse's station behind a desk and a break room so while you're in the red zone you need to have all your equipment on when you come out the red zone what you need to immediately take off is your gloves and wash your hands but you could keep on your gown so they they approved us to keep these gowns on for hours at a time as long as we didn't go into the green zone that was also super gross because i feel like i'm being colonized with the with the germs but their goal was to keep PPE. So then I started to feel like, do you value us or do you just worry about the supplies? The CDC also decreased standards and regulations for other infectious diseases, such as MRSA. Now, normally if you have a patient with MRSA, you put on a gown and you go see them. Now, you don't need the gown. All right, so we're gonna save all our equipment for coronavirus. And that was like, that was that was breathtaking. They started the screening for all employees when you come into the hospital. When I go into work, someone takes my temperature and they scan it. They scan my forehead, take my temperature, and I have to answer, have I traveled outside of Texas in the last 14 days? Have I left the country? At first it started with, have you left the country in the last 14 days? Then it went to, have you traveled to New York, New Jersey, or Connecticut in the last 14 days? Then now, currently, it's have you left Texas in the last 14 days? If you leave Texas right now, you need to self-quarantine for 14 days. When I come in, they give me scrubs to put on before I go into a patient's room, and I give them I give them those scrubs back before I leave to go home. And I like that idea. That means I'm not carrying anything home with me on my scrubs. Um, I still wash, uh, like wipe my shoes with Lysol, even though I have coverings. I wipe my watch, my anything, anything, my pens, everything, uh, my eyeglasses, uh, your cell phone, you wipe it down with Lysol before you, well, I did before I would get into my car. You could imagine healthcare workers started to get exposed to this and test positive for the coronavirus. One of the admitting doctors in the emergency room tested positive and everybody who worked with him that night, all the staff needed to be tested, all the patients he's seen needed to be tested. And while you're tested, we're treating you like a positive um, until we rule out whether or not you have it. This test was supposed to take um, 
48 hours. In some cases, it took up to five days at some point. It is a swab that goes up your nose and all the way back. It's like really deep, all the way back. I would say like if, if you were looking at it uh, in an imagery as a diagram, it would be back here. Hearing about your coworkers testing positive brings on a whole different level of anxiety because now we have to investigate, well, where'd you go? What, who'd you get it from? And that's another reason why we're signing people in and out of those rooms because we can see that Jasmine went into Mr. Johnson's room four times. So maybe Jasmine got it from Mr. Mr. Johnson or maybe Jasmine got it from outside. Does Jasmine's family at home have it or did her family give it to her? It's really hard trying to narrow down patient zero. This virus, was most devastating to older adults. My patients were usually in their 60s. 60, 70 year olds seems to be like the most common COVID patient, the most common age of the COVID patients that I've seen, but it is not exclusive to them. What I started to realize, and we all realized really quickly, is if a patient got ill enough that they needed to be intubated, it was, very unlikely we would ever extubate them and it decreased their chances of survival significantly. A lot of them never got well enough so that they could begin to breathe on their own again. Also in advanced stages of coronavirus, you start to have organ failure, starts to affect other organs, most specifically kidney kidney failure. So once we saw a patient intubated and her kidney function started to decrease, like we kind of knew that it wasn't likely they were making, they were going to make it. Seeing doctors trial the drug Plaquenil, which is, was formerly used uh, or most popularly used for malaria. Thousands of staff members kind of out of work. So what they did was these weekend COVID classes where they would have nurses who were, you know, maybe labor and delivery, train them to take on another type of patient, not become an ICU nurse, you know, not that far, but they were definitely put into positions where they didn't have a lot of experience for. And as I mentioned, I was a travel nurse and I was contacted by several recruiters to take a travel assignment in New York. They were offering, it started as an offer of $5,000 a week. And then it went to an offer of $10,000 a week. So when it got to $10,000 a week, we started, I started thinking like, well, how bad is coronavirus? <laughs> Cause that's a huge amount of money. So I asked the recruiter, I said, well, what's going on with the PPE? Can you give me PPE? She says, yeah, well, there's more, the shipments coming in every day, whatever, whatever. So you'll be fine. You should have everything you need. I said, well, can you put it in my contract? And she said, put what? I said, I receive daily adequate PPE. I want that typed out and written in my contract. And she said, no, she said she couldn't put that in my contract. So. I never took the assignment to New York, but I know several people who have um, dealt with it. They've seen some very inhumane situations and maybe it's best that I didn't go. Um, I think psychologically that would have been very devastating. And also I had to tend to my business. Surprisingly enough, my own personal business, Polish Appearance, did its best April, 2020. I had generated the most revenue ever April 2020 in the midst of a pandemic which is awesome so maybe we need to keep those salons closed <laughs> but you know I'm just trying to mention and think of the silver lining to all of this I think when we go back to normal I think hospitals are going to continue to say you keep one in 95 all day for this one patient. I don't think we're going to go back to letting them be one time use disposable because hospitals are about their budget. And I'm sure this was budget friendly to say you only get one a day versus I have access to six or eight or 
as many as I need. I'm back at work. We have flattened the curve, but there's still plenty of work to be done. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Until next time, be safe.